Hello everyone, this is DJ from GarageFarm.net Academy. Today I'll be showing you how to shade the curtains that we created in the first part. I've done it in cycles in 2.79, the official stable version, but to make it fun, we'll use that uh, using the beta of 2.80. So here's the scene in EV, but we will be using cycles for this. The node setup can be done just the same in the 2.79. Or you can already use 2.80 for your interior work. And the 2.80 has a different UI, so uh, to make our shading, let's switch the cycles. Uh, as you can recall from the first uh, part, uh, we have already unwrapped the object. Here in the upper stripe, we have some workspaces. And uh, if we go to the UV editing, for example, if we go tab to edit mode, we have to change this from image editor to the UV editor. So you can see. It's perfectly evenly unwrapped for a full texture. So let's go to the shading tab. This is the node setup that I have for the curtains. It looks a little bit messy, but it's really um, quite simple. And let's start this from scratch. So let's delete this one. Let's get going with a new setup. And you can see that 2.80 already gives us the basic principle BSDF shader. This is the one that we're going to use the most uh, for, for some simple PBR shaders. So uh, in 2.80, the node wrangler add-on is uh, enabled by default. So you don't have to remember about that. So if you go to Control Shift T for the principal node selected, you go to a principal node setup, find the fabric texture that you want. And this is fabric one from CC0 texture that I use. We have four textures here for the color, displacement, normal, map and roughness. And that's pretty, pretty much enough for us for the beginning. So we just have to press the principal texture setup and it just creates a whole basic shader setup for us. And this is all you want for a basic material. But what I don't like is the displacement. Kind of too big. You can see it's going spiky. So let's just maybe forget about this displacement for now. We just use the normal maps in this case. But right now it's like fully uh, opaque, so it doesn't let any light shine through. To do that, we have to really set something for the transmission here. So if we go just simply dragging the slider to maybe 0.5, it will be already half translucent. I set up also a solidify modifier for this one so we so we get a little bit of thickness. So the lighting is just a simple HDRI with the directional lighting so heavy heavy sunlight so that it's going through the window and in the windows I just didn't add any any kind of glass. It gives good results. But right now this is just like independent of any texture that is uh, applied to the surface is just like plain transmission so uh, some of the light just passes through and some gets diffused um, but that's really al already a nice effect you can use for example the roughness texture add a math node plug in the color of the roughness, roughness map, so it's black and white image and it has the values from 0 to 1. So you can maybe multiply this, make it a small value, so multiply by 0.1, so it's one tenth of the value, and let's make this transmission value. You can see right now it adapts a little bit to the roughness of, uh, of the fabric, so a bit more sophisticated. But now it's just like playing curtains and we wanted to add a a pattern over the fabric. So I just found uh, an image, this kind of pattern image. It, it's like a virtual dyeing of the, of the fabric, so let's use a color Mix RGB node and plug this in here and plug our pattern here. 
right now is a mix. But if we if you want a more subtle effect, maybe use overlay. And you can use overlay for total one. So it's like fully dyed. And it's looking pretty nice and pretty natural. One thing I, I don't like is the scaling of the textures, so uh, we can use another mapping a node. This, so a different one. And if we plug this into the vector of uh, the texture, we can use a different scaling. So for example, Alt, Alt press all the three uh, values and press like 5 and now you can see that they are using different scaling well maybe it's also a little bit too big so let's make it to 2 I think it's, uh, it's more natural for the scale of, of the scene and right now if we have a visible pattern in a pretty convincing scale for the fabric This is the kind of basic way of getting a, a tra semi-transparent shader, or you can do this also with a mixed shader, and just adding a translucent shader for the fabric to get more, even, an even more subtle uh, way of translucency for the for our curtain. You can use the subsurface scattering, and uh, this setting is here in the principal PSDF shader. We can combine this with the transparency stuff, so let me just pick a color for the subsurface color. Let's make it uh, just the color of our curtain, or maybe just slightly less saturated and lighter. So this will like scatter the light subtly um, and more softly, so let's uh, just make it 0.3 for example to make it quite visible and you can see it's already shining through a little bit harder and it gives a little bit of a glow around the places where the direct sun rays come in into the mesh and gives this uh, kind of glowing effect scattering of, of light beneath the surface of the of the curtain and I think it looks pretty cool so it's uh, definitely uh, longer to render, but I think it's worth it. The effect is pretty nice. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it and found it informative and useful. Uh, so you can experiment with your node setups. Uh, just check the materials, mix different textures and see how they work. That's really the big advantage of cycles in Blender. You, you can preview the materials in real time in the viewport. So make use of it and have fun. Go on and check out uh, other videos in our channel and also uh, join the live streams. So that's it, time to draw the curtain. Happy blending!